Hey folks, in this episode we're going to be exploring displacement maps in Blender. I'm going to show you how to make this scene here. It should be fairly straightforward, so without further ado, let's get to it. So open up Blender, and then we go to Edit, Preferences, and go to Add-ons, and in the search box type in Node for Node Wrangler, and then enable the Node Wrangler here. When you've enabled this, click this button here, and click Save Preferences. Go to your web browser, and in your web browser type in Displacement X, hit search in my web browser it's the number one search result so it's displacementx.pages.dev we'll navigate over to here and this is the ui i'm going to have mine set to 8k you can choose any resolution that you like and first off if i just click render you can see what happens it creates a displacement map over here i'm going to mute all of these except for the top one i'll just give you a quick overview so that's everything muted now if i hit render you can see that the rect is basically squares and this will be the scale of the squares. The basic settings at the top is the overall settings for all of these over here. So I'll turn the background brightness down to zero. And if I turn the iterations up to 2000, for example, you can see it's generating a displacement map based on all these settings here. If you want to reset it, just go to refresh over here. I'll just show you these other settings. They're fairly straightforward. The second one where it says grid is basically it generates grids like that. Let's just disable that. I'll then enable coals. What coals is, is vertical columns. So if I click render, you can see it's creating vertical columns. I'll then disable that. I'll enable rows. And this creates horizontal columns. So it's creating rows. I'll disable that. I'll then enable lines. And this will generate random lines. So I'll click render. It's creating random lines. Of course, you can turn the iterations up. I'll then disable the lines. I'll enable sprites. And this should generate random panels. Now I'm going to go to refresh and refresh the whole page to enable all of these. I'm going to turn my background brightness to zero. I'm going to turn my iterations up to, let's say, around about a thousand under rect. I'm going to turn the scale down to 20 under grid. I'm going to turn the scale down to 20, but I'm going to increase the gap to, let's say, 400, something around there for coals. I'm going to reduce the scale down to 20. I'm going to increase the gap to, let's say, 400. I'll do the same for rows, so I'm going to take the scale all the way down, I'm going to increase the gap to 400. I'll then disable lines and enable sprites. Select big data blocks, agromax, crap pack, and the rotate should be on already. I'm going to keep my composition filters as they are. I'll then change it to 8k, and I'm going to click render. If you don't like your displacement map, you just click render again, and you keep clicking this until you've got something that you like. I'm going to go for something around there. I'll then click download we could scroll down and we can click preview normal map and it will generate a normal map based on the displacement map i'm not going to use normal maps so i'll disable that we can also colorize this so you go to color and preview color i'm going to click add stop i'll add another stop and maybe one more and i click randomize until i've got a nice color palette maybe something around there i'll then click preview color and it will create a color map based on your color palette down here i'm going to click preview original i'm not actually going to use a color map i'm just going to be using this displacement map maybe i want to generate another displacement map so we've got two so i'll click render again and i keep clicking this button until i've got something that i like i'll be happy with that i'll then click download okay so we now have got those in our download folder i'll just reduce this window here i'm going to go into blender i could use this default cube but i'm actually going to delete it and i'm going to add this to a plane so i'm going to hit shift a go to mesh and i'm going to choose plane i'll tap into edit mode I'm going to hit S10 and then hit enter. I'll then right click or click subdivide and I'll open up the subdivision panel down here and I'm going to give it 32 cuts. That should do for now. I'll then tab out of edit mode. I'll then navigate to my modifiers. I'll click add modifier. I'm going to go generate and we're going to choose subdivision surface. I'm going to bump this up on the viewport to let's say five. Maybe I'll set the render to six. I'll also click simple. I'll then take my cursor to the bottom left down here till I see this crosshair. I'm going to left click and drag and open up a new window. I'll click this button and I'm going to change it to the shader editor. I'll then click new. I hit N to close the end panel. I'll just drag this window up a bit. And with the node wrangler enabled, I'm going to select the principal BSDF and hit control T. And that will add a texture coordinate node, a mapping node, and an image texture node. I'll then hit G, just drag these across over to around about here. I'm going to click open, navigate to where you saved your displacement maps. Mine's in downloads. So I'm going to select this displacement map here. I'm going to click open image. I'm going to change the color space from sRGB to non-color data, because anything that isn't color is non-color data. I'll then hit shift A. I'm going to go to vector, and I'm going to choose displacement. I'll pop that down here. 
I'll plug the displacement map into the height of the displacement node. I'll then plug the displacement from the displacement node into the displacement of the material output. I'm going to hold down control, right click and drag just to disconnect that. As you can see, we're not getting any displacement because by default it's coming through as bump. So now what we have to do is tell Blender to treat this like a displacement map. So before we do that, I'm just going to go to my render settings over here. I'm going to change it to cycles. You can keep yours on EV if you like. I'll then navigate to the material settings over here. I'll then scroll down to where it says settings expand these options scroll down where it says displacement it says bump only we're going to change this from bump only to displacement and now you can see we've got displacement excellent i'll then hit shift a i'm going to go to converter and i'm going to choose color ramp and i'm going to pop that there i'm going to change it from linear to constant i'll click this plus button and add a couple of flags maybe something around there now we can choose our color palette here plug the displacement map into the factor of the color ramp and the color from the color ramp into the base color with the principal BSDF. And now we want to choose a color palette. Ideally, you want to make these complementary colors. So for this flag, I'm going to set to maybe a blue, something around there. I'll set this flag to like a yellowy gold, something around there perhaps. And I'll set this flag to maybe, we'll go for a, a copper color. Maybe I'll add one more flag. So I'm just going to drag this one across. I click the plus button and we'll set this to a white, but sort of a bluish tone. And maybe I can darken it down a bit. We're just going to drag these flags across. Maybe I'll add another flag. Just drag this back here. And I'm going to darken this colour. Maybe I'll take the saturation all the way down. And bring it up slightly. Something around there. Maybe a bit less blue. I'll then hit Shift D. Duplicate that colour ramp. I'll just pop it down here. So I'll select this flag. Go to the colour. I'm going to bring the saturation all the way down. I'll select this flag. Go to the saturation. Bring that all the way down. Do the same for this one. Bring the saturation down. Do the same for this one and this one. I'm going to plug the colour from the displacement map into the roughness. I'll then put the colour ramp in between the displacement map and the roughness and maybe we can manipulate some of these until we've got something to our taste. So this flag here for the yellow which will be this flag here. I'm going to bring this down so the darker the colour the shinier the material. For the copper flag this one here this is going to be shiny but not as shiny and maybe this one we can turn this up something around there. I'll just set this to metallic Maybe I'll increase the brightness of the base colour. So let's just drag this up to around about there. I'm going to go into rendered view. I'll then click this button here, disable scene lighting and scene world. And that will use the HDRs built into Blender just so we can better preview what we've got. Okay, that's looking quite good. And at the moment it's using UV coordinates. Of course, you can use object coordinates. If you use object coordinates, like on a cube, then you want to change your displacement map from flat to box. But I'm going to change mine back to flat. Okay, I'm going to click this arrow here. I'm going to click scene lights and scene world. I'm going to take my default lamp. I'm going to hit delete. I then change my shader editor from object to world. And with the background selected, I'm going to hit control T and that will add the texture coordinate mapping and environment texture nodes. I then click open. I'm just going to open an HDR environment texture. I'm going to open one that I made. This one, that should do fine. If you haven't got an HDR, a good website to go to, Polyhaven. Then go to Polyhaven under the assets tab, click HDR. And then you get loads of free HDRs here and you can download them in various formats. Let's just pick this one, for example. You can select the resolution that you like. I'm gonna go for 16K and then simply click download. And when you've downloaded that, add it into your scene here. I'm gonna turn my brightness up to, let's say two. Let's see what that looks like. Might need to turn it up to four. Let's go to four. Still not bright enough. I'm gonna go 10. Okay, excellent. Now with the camera selected, I'm going to hit numpad 1 to go into front view. I'm going to hit control out numpad 0 and that will align my camera to the 3D view. Let me just decrease this window up here. I'm going to go into viewport shading. I'll then go to my object data over here. I'm going to set the X location to 0. I'm going to set the Z location to let's say 1. That will do for now. I'm going to go to my camera settings over here. I'm going to change it from 50 mil to 70 mil. I'll go back to my object data over here and I'm going to drag on the Y axis until I'm relatively close. Maybe I can bring it up on the Z axis to two meters perhaps and I'll rotate it on the X rotation to around about there. Maybe bring it up another couple of meters to something around about there. Okay, so on frame one, drag it on the X axis until I've got something relatively interesting in my scene. Something around about there perhaps and bring it back on the Y axis one meter. I'm going to hover my cursor over location i'm going to hit i to add a keyframe alternatively you can click these buttons here so under rotation i'll just click these three buttons here i'm going to skip let's say 60 frames 
So for my scene, I'm running at 30 frames per second. So 60 frames will be two seconds of animation. I'll go back to my object data and I'm gonna drag it on the Y axis forward one meter. I'll then hit I and I again. I'm gonna drag my shader editor up and I'll click this button here. I'm gonna change it from shader editor to graph editor. By default, your animation type will be set to Bezier. So the animation will start off slow, it will speed up and then it will slow down as it stops. We don't want that, we want a consistent speed. So click A to select all your keyframes and then in your graph editor or your timeline, hit T and then change it from Bezier to linear. And now we've got a consistent speed. Now the key here for a good look is to have a slow animation. You want the camera movement to be really slow. So now I'm just gonna change this back to my shader editor. I'm gonna decrease this window over here. I'm gonna skip to frame 60 because that was the last frame where we added the keyframe. I'm gonna skip one more frame. So we're on frame 61 and I'll drag my camera to a new position so I'm going to bring it over here maybe I'll bring it forward I then add keyframes for the location and rotation and I'm going to skip 59 frames so that will be frame 120 I'll then drag the camera maybe I'll take it on the x-axis by one meter so I'll take it to negative three I then hit I and I again maybe I'll do that a couple more times so I'm going to skip to frame 121 we'll move the camera to another position maybe something around here perhaps I'll then hit I and I again over the location and rotation I'm gonna skip 59 frames, so I hit plus five nine. And that will take us to frame 180. Maybe for this one, I'll drag it back on the y-axis by one meter. I then hit I, I again. I'll skip one more frame, reposition the camera, something around there perhaps. I'll then hit I, I, and I'll skip to the last frame. Maybe I'll drag it on the x-axis by one. I'll then hit I, and I again over location and rotation. So this is the animation. We're gonna add depth of field to this next which should be easy. We're gonna add an empty as a controller. Okay, so let's do that now. So skip to frame one, we'll zoom in. So I'm gonna hold down shift and right click where I want the focal point to be. I want the focal point to be round about there. I'll then hit shift A and I'm gonna to go to empty and I'm gonna choose sphere. So I'm gonna set the camera to focus on this object. So I'm gonna to go to my outliner. I'm gonna select my camera. I then go to my camera data down here and I'm gonna enable depth of field and for the focus on object, I'm gonna select that empty object. I want quite a heavy depth of field, so I'm gonna change my f-stop to maybe 0.7 and I'm gonna set the blades to 16. I'll then preview what that looks like in render view. Okay, I want a bit more depth of field, so I'm gonna reduce the f-stop to maybe 0.3. There we go, it's a bit more predominant now. I'll then select the empty object. In fact, let's rename this object to focus I then go to object data over here and I'm gonna add a keyframe on X Y and Z for location we we'll then skip to frame 60 and we can move this object so let's say I want it to focus here so I'm gonna hold down shift left click with the empty object selected I'm gonna hit shift s and we'll choose selection to cursor and now the focus point is here and we'll add another keyframe on X Y and Z I'll then skip forward one frame to frame 61 I'll then hold down shift and right click where I want my focus point to be I'll then hit shift s and we'll choose selection to cursor I'll then add keyframe on the X Y and Z location and then we go to frame 120 maybe I want the pull focus over here so I'm gonna hold down shift right click and then I'll hit shift s and then choose selection to cursor I then add a keyframe on X Y and Z I'm gonna skip forward one more frame I'll then hold down shift and right click shift s and we'll choose selection to cursor I don't really want the focus point there for now so I'm gonna navigate over here I hold down shift and right click I then hit shift s selection to cursor I then add a keyframe on X Y and Z for the location I'll then skip to frame 180 I'll take my cursor over to here I'm gonna hold down shift right click shift s selection to cursor I'll then add a keyframe on X Y and Z for the location I'm gonna skip forward one more frame I'll hold down shift, right click and place my cursor. I'll then hit shift S and we'll choose selection to cursor. Again, I'm gonna add keyframes for X, Y, and Z on the location and I'll skip to the last frame and maybe I'll take the focus point to over here. So I'm gonna hold down shift, right click, shift S and selection to cursor. I'll then add keyframes on X, Y, and Z for the location. I'll then skip back to frame one. Maybe I'll just choose a random frame somewhere around about there perhaps. We can stack these displacement maps. So I'll just show you how to do that. I'm just gonna change my shader editor from world to object. I'll then select the displacement object, which is this plane. I'll now show you how to stack these displacement maps. So remember, we downloaded two displacement maps. So with this displacement map selected, I'm gonna hit Control Shift D, and that will duplicate that node while maintaining the connection to the previous node. I then click this cross, then click open, navigate to where you downloaded your displacement maps. This is the one I've already got loaded. This is another one. So I'm gonna select this one. I'm gonna click open image. 
I'll then select this displacement map. I'm going to hit Shift D to duplicate and I'm going to change this second displacement map from sRGB to non-color data. I'll then plug the color into the height of this displacement map here. Let's just drag this across. I'll then hit Shift A. I'm going to go to Converter and we're going to choose Vector Math. We're going to keep it set to Add. I'll pop that in there and then I'll pop this displacement into the bottom socket. Now if I reduce the scale of this second displacement map to let's say 0.25 you can see we've added another layer of detail. Let's just zoom in. Okay, it's out of focus a bit here. Go out of my camera view. So if I disable this, I'll hit zero. You can see that's the first displacement map that's enabled. And now if I hit 0.25, you can see we've added another layer of detail. You can bump this up to whatever you see fit. Usually it's better to set your second displacement map to a lower value for secondary detail. So I'm gonna set mine to 0 0.25. I'll just hit numpad zero to go into camera view. I'll scroll back to frame one. I'm going to rendered view. Okay, that's not looking too shabby. Of course you can tweak the colors and whatnot. So let's go over to here. Maybe I'll change this color. I'm just gonna adjust the roughness for my copper color. So I'm gonna make that a bit more shiny. Excellent for my viewport. I'm just going to bring this level down to maybe three, just so it's a bit more manageable. My computer's running a bit slow. If you want to speed it up a bit as well, click output and then go render region, and then it'll only render what's in the camera view. I'll just go to viewport shading. Before we continue, just go to file, choose save as, and I'm going to save my project as like and subscribe. Thanks folks, you absolute legends. Of course, you don't have to rely solely on your HDR for lighting. I would encourage you to experiment with lighting. So add some lamps, suns and whatnot into your scene. Of course, you don't have to use a flat plane. You can use any shape that you like. These are just the basics. So I encourage you to experiment. And for my render settings, over here, I've got mine set to cycles. I'll set my noise threshold to 0.025. I'm going to set my maximum samples to, let's say, 2048. That should be more than enough. You could probably get away with something like 256. Under light paths, I'm going to disable reflective and refractive core sticks. And just to speed up my render times, under performance, I'm going to click persistent data and that will ensure that the displacement maps and the HDR doesn't have to load in the cache every time it renders a frame it stores that in the memory and that will just help speed up build times for your render we'll then navigate to your output tab over here I'm going to save mine as a PNG sequence if this was a final production I'd actually save it as an open EXR with a codec of DWAA lossy and that will decrease your file size while increasing your dynamic range but for now I'm just going to set mine to PNG and then under output click this button and choose a file location where you want to save your images i've got mine in a folder called like and subscribe then click accept i hit Control s just to save and then it's simply a case of hitting Control f12 and that will render out your image sequence that's the tutorial in a nutshell if you found this useful please click like and subscribe it really helps my channel have a great day level up and thanks for watching